Jeopardy! And we are live, live with the Auburn Medical Group YouTube channel. You get to be a part of this because this is a live program and you can actually chat using the chat function in YouTube to be a part of our discussion about arrhythmias, which is what Dr. Gwen uh, had written about in his Dr. Green Knight blog this week. If you don't have that or you're not familiar with it, it's drgreennight.com, dr Let's see, D-R-G-R-E-E-N-K-N-I-G-H-T dot com. And there's a link to it uh, in the description of this video, specifically linking to today's post, which is about heart rhythm disturbances. It's part of his three-part series on heart disease. We had done a video related to his first part back two weeks ago, I believe, when we talked about estimating your risk for heart disease risk. And that was a calculator that we had a link to in the description of that video. And we showed you how we did it with, with, with my profile. I think we might be using myself on today's on arrhythmias also. Not that I have an arrhythmia, don't worry about that, but to show how, how we uh, look at them. So the reason that I am here solo and the honored chair of Dr. Gwen is not filled is because he is with patients right at the moment. So as soon as he's able to clear up with the patients and finish with the student we're working with today, he'll be in here to talk more about rhythm disturbances or arrhythmias, a meaning not, not a not in rhythm or, or not rhythmic, arrhythmias. Uh, also, you could call it dysrhythmias or a, an incorrect rhythm, depending on which type it is. And he'll go into great detail about, about that. Uh, until then, I want to kind of do some things about our channel. Of course, encouraging people to subscribe and also to get notifications on our channel. YouTube's kind of changed you don't any longer get notifications just because you subscribe to a channel. Now to really get... Yeah, Teresa Roa, Laura Spurs, who else? Sarah Okay, Weekly. our bit rate is super low. I wonder what's going on. Oh, yippee. Yeah, that's all right. We'll go ahead and talk anyway. They'll, they'll <laughs> hear us. Yeah, they'll hear us when we're talking about things. Yep. Oh, Laura said we froze. I'm not... Oh, I'm not, we no, froze. That's wow. Not good. Okay. As soon as I came in. Awesome. Yep. Must be me. Okay, so... <laughs> yeah, it was I, it's seriously just a chilling it, discovery. It was actually super good before we went live. What? Well, of course. I don't know. Sorry. I paused it. I promise. <laughs> it could be somebody else using the internet here. We'll, we we show, do run you know, a business other than this here. That's true. <laughs> and because of that, I'll have you talk rhythm, about rhythm disturbances while I see if I can find why we have a bad. Oh, so I'm going to talk while it just pauses in and out and it buffers for people. Well, that's why I'm going to do this. So I can Maybe do this. we should use that as an allegory to rhythm disorders. So, just me. Sorry, guys. No. Uh, so, rhythm disorders. So, first of all, if you haven't checked it out, go on over to uh, drgreennight.com. Wrote a whole blog post on arrhythmias, uh, and you can learn everything that we talked about here. It's all in black and white there, so check it out, drgreennight.com. Uh, make sure you sign up for um, uh, the post. They come out once a week. Um, always something fun and exciting there. So check that out. Um, yeah, unfortunately we are buffering a lot and I'm sorry for that. I am getting those messages. So, so I'm, uh, I apologize, but we'll talk a little bit about uh, arrhythmias. So arrhythmias, where do we want to start? Uh, first symptoms, I guess, symptoms of arrhythmia. Sometimes you don't have symptoms. Sometimes it's just found randomly. Um, we're doing a routine EKG for uh, preoperatively, uh, sometimes surgeons, well, not sometimes, but a lot, a lot of times surgeons want an EKG and make sure your heart's good before surgery. So we do those and then we can pick up in a regular rhythm. Uh, sometimes uh, we're doing a, a Medicare screening uh, EKG and it can be found on that. Uh, but uh, sometimes you can actually have symptoms. So sometimes with no symptoms, sometimes with symptoms. Right. And oh, you blocked my view. Oh, sorry. Uh, hopefully, but people are saying we're having some problem. Um, That's good now. <laughs> Uh, and uh, so if you're having symptoms, you can get a lot of uh, different symptoms. The common one is like a fluttering in the heart or an extra feeling of an extra beat in the heart. Um, some people say it's like a, a flip-flop or a fluttering. It's, it's hard to describe, but they feel like their heart is um, not, not beating correctly. Which, which camera are we using? I don't even... This one. Oh, okay. I was going to say, I'm looking at that one, I, but you're adjusting the other one. Uh, so... Uh, um, that, that can be symptoms. Sometimes if it gets severe enough and you're not pumping blood efficiently due to this irregular rhythm, you can start to get other symptoms like lightheadedness. That's not enough blood going to the brain. Um, uh, what else can you get? You get chest pain if you're not getting enough blood to the heart. Uh, um, you get shortness of breath. Uh, so uh, those, are, those are things that, that can happen. 
Um, other symptoms, am I missing anything at all? Uh, I think I hit all the main symptoms uh, of arrhythmia. Uh, so that, those are symptoms. Um, there are a bunch of different types. How do you want to go over those? Or do you want to um, just talk about them, each one on its so, own? So you did think? you introduce them as, say, um, ventricular? And I, I didn't ventral get there yet. Basically just said how we different. find them. Um, mm -hmm. And if you have symptoms or not, sometimes just found randomly. Yeah. Um, like on a screening EKG. Uh, I guess that's the big thing. An EKG is typically how we find these. So that's where the doctor in the doctor's office, they hook you up to these leads across your chart, heart and on your limbs. We can actually demonstrate Ooh, a single lead. A single lead. Yeah, actually, we, so. if you watch our viewers of our channel, you do know that we use the, um, what is it called? The This is the Echo Duo. Echo Duo. That's what it's called. It, it's, yes. it's a stethoscope where you have the diaphragm here for the listening to the, the heart sounds. You know, you put around the different spots, the yep. four cardinal areas of, of auscultation. You can also use it for lungs too. Um, other things, carotid arteries and such. For listening regularly, yeah. But uh, you'll notice that it also has these metal parts to it that can conduct electricity. And Ooh. if they're in contact with skin, you can actually see uh, heart electrical activity, which so is what an EKG is. So On me or you? I'll, I'm, I'm kind of more ready for it, yeah. I guess. Okay, good. Uh, uh, between the two of us. So if hey, I we can do one turn on the app. So this is a one lead EKG. So we're just checking essentially what an EKG is looking at um, electrical vectors. So so the way electrical signals are being, ooh, cool. Do I get to show this to them and see? Yeah, what yeah. Shows? So they're, they're right here. Yeah, and if you want to see, see oh, how it's looking. So right now we're not get getting anything. As to what, what they're seeing, it looks like this. Oh, let, let's see if I can get this. So you can, you can show them. Close enough. In irregular. Uh, that okay, way. so that, that's with nothing. It, that's just noise. Yeah, it's abnormal. Oh, we'll go that way. Yeah. There we go. And, and you can even see when I talk there into it. There we go. Now we're can, in focus. You see the audio there. See the waveform when Ooh, I talk Ooh, I'll go up a Okay, so if I was to put this on my skin, on my chest, in about the right vector for a, or, or, a, a lead to, and if I stop I, talking... Wait for it. Hey, that almost looks like an EKG rhythm there. Look at that. So you guys can see that is his heart beating at a very slow rate. What is that, like 40 beats a minute? <laughs> Does it say uh, either here or here? Uh, I can't see it. Oh, am I supposed to push this button? No. no Should but, I do that? But one of these, beats. I think, is beats per minute. It does say it. It's not coming up, though. I see the BPM. But I don't see it coming up. But anyways, that's it. That's a pretty good tracing there. It's got all of the different waves that we see within an EKG. So let's see if I can show people this. This is going to be hard to do because I'm doing this while looking. Oh, that's not going to work. <laughs> but anyways, uh, EKGs have a, a bunch of different uh, little blips, and those are electrical waves. Oh, you went all over the place. You must have done something. Um, those are electrical impulses here. I'll pull it back here impulses going through the heart uh, in the different areas of the heart. So the atrial, atrium and the ventricle. So, so there's two atria, those are the upper chambers of the heart and the two, two, two ventricles. So we need to talk a little bit about how um, normal electrical conduction works within the heart. So the heart has a, its own pacemaker. It's called the sinoatrial node. It's on the upper chamber of the heart in the atrium. Those are the upper chambers. And it is beating at its own pace, sending out this uh, electrical signal at a normal pace. A normal pace is anywhere from about 50 to 100 beats a minute. Um, yours is nice and slow because <laughs> he yes, runs a lot. Uh, but it, it, it sends out this, this beat. And that goes around the, or the atrium. And as that electrical flow goes around, the... Um, muscles within the heart depolarize and it causes contraction. So the atrium contracts. And then that electrical pulse is gathered right in the middle at, at a, a node called the atrioventricular node or the AV node. And then it has a very slight delay and then it sends it down to uh, the ventricles. And as it goes to the ventricles, it actually goes down to the bottom and then comes around to the outside. And as it sends that signal, it starts to depolarize the ventricles. So then they start to contract and push the blood where it needs to go, either out of the body to, to your system or for the right side of the heart into the lungs. Um, so pretty amazing. Um, yeah. and, and then it resets. And then it resets and starts all over and, again. And, and all actually... those little blips that we see are um, 
uh, parts of that electrical conduction that I just discussed. Yeah, both so. the contraction and the reset. Yes, and the resetting, which right. Which we refer to as repolarization. Mm -hmm. And we yes. talked about that a little bit on the on that one video where we had the EKG strip. Actually, that's our thumbnail for this right. too. Right, yeah. About the different parts. So, so we're following what it's doing, but the arrhythmias is when that whole complex Gets has a up. weird relationship to the other ones. So right. instead of being regular, it's irregular or there's, yep. Missing parts of it, right? Or, yeah, that's a good way. Or, so, so we get, you can divide it into four ways, but but essentially two ways. One would be fast beats, slow beats. So slow beats are yeah. pretty straightforward, pretty they can basic, look pretty normal. It's just fast. And, yeah, so it's just slow would be down. like mine. <laughs> uh, slow would be his, which can be completely normal. But if I saw a normal person and they had a heart rate of thirty. That may that would probably be concerning. Uh, so as the sci as you get older, typically, or even a person who's on a certain type of medicine, medication, and you see my heart my heart rhythm on them when it should be faster. Right, we're doing that. We to know them. It's medicine. <laughs> the medication Yikes. can do that. Yeah. So we stop medication if they're not on medication that's going slow. They may need a pacemaker. Their heart just may not be sending out that signal at the sinoatrial node fast enough. Yeah. So they actually need us to do that for them, and then a pacemaker can be implanted that can do that, which um, is is the treatment for that. We don't have any good medications that speed up the heart reliably. So that's why uh, why that's typically <laughs> yeah that's why that's typically uh, you can do the it, treatment. You can, but then you <laughs> run the risk of high blood pressure and a bunch of other issues. Yeah. Um, so that's a slow heart. That's uh, the other part of a slow heart is like slowed conduction. Yeah. Um, your heart, like I said, as you're going from the the atrium down to the ventricles, it, it um, collects at the AV node. There can be a slowed um, progression of that electrical signal. And there's a bunch of different types. I won't get into all the so details about there. The individual beat is slow. Yeah, in between. And you can see it on that EKG. You actually see widening um, of between the upper beats and the lower beats, yeah. electrical conduction of the upper and lower chambers of the heart. And why is that bad? Uh, because that, if it degrades or goes to the yeah. point what that it can turn into. Yeah. It, it, you can actually get a full block where that signal is just not getting through and then the ventricle is just pumping on its own. And it's usually at a pretty basic rate of 20 to 30 beats per second, which is slow and not sufficient. Yeah, kind of, yeah. So it, it's, it's enough to make you hold you on until you can get a pacemaker, essentially. <laughs> and and we have found those in this office. Yes. Yeah. I, I have said, oh, yeah. uh, just randomly, this guy, you know, routine visit, he's like, I feel a little... A little funny, you check his pulse and it's at 30 and, and we did an EKG and his upper chambers of the heart were beating at a normal rate and the lo lower chambers were beating at their own pace. Just on their own. Just not even getting the signal yeah. through. Um, so he went to the ER and he got, came back to me next time with a pacemaker. Yep. So, so those right. are slow beats, fast beats. Fast beats, you can have uh, atrial fibrillation, which is what so we see quite often. Fast beats can probably be divided into two categories, the upper chambers of the heart causing it in the lower chambers. So, so upper chambers, atrial fibrillation. So what is that? That's where you have the, well, the two chambers are beating totally independent of each other right. on their own. And the upper chamber usually is going fast, like over 120 beats per minute. But it's called rapid ventricular rate, RVR. And, and it can result in a fast ventricular rate, the part of the heart that actually does the work, that's what we feel. If you feel pulses, the ventricles. But it's up. not picking up all of the uh, excitations from the upper chamber. Yeah. And the reason it can be a problem is because it can, well, be stressing on you because your heart's beating so fast. It can also be a problem because without the upper chambers beating in a coordinated way, you can actually get blood clots forming in there that just right. sometime decide to move on. And yep. when they do, it could be a clot going to the brain, a stroke. Yeah, so they the often lung. describe this fibrillation as a quivering, yeah. uh, quivering ventricle. So, so that, that, um, that upper chamber should be pumping and then like this dual action. And if that upper chamber is just kind of quivering, that leaves areas in that chamber where blood just isn't flowing well. And if blood doesn't flow, it clots. They call it bag of worms? Yeah. What else is bag of worms anatomically? Uh, varicosities in your scrotum. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so, apparently they like that description. So, apparently that, that's more than one body part yep, that can be described as bag of words. There went our monetization. All yeah, right, all back right. to. Once again. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Sorry. atrial fibrillation. Very common. I'm, I'm sure you've probably heard of somebody who has um, yeah, AFib is it, the short term for it. It's actually what we find using this thing. You know, when we hear a yeah. heart rhythm, we go... People have found it on their Apple Watches. Yes, we've had patients do that. Come in and say, hey, what's this, doc? It says... My Apple Watch it says found it's a regular. It. Um, when you feel the pulse on somebody like that, the ventricles are getting these quivering um, signals, 
but at a kind of an irregular. So they'll catch some, miss other ones. So you have this irregular beating of the so if you, of the of the ventricles. So you feel their pulse, and it's all over the place. It's like beep 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 beep. beep. It's yeah. like all over, and we call that an irregularly yeah. irregular rhythm. Irregularly irregular because a person can have a regularly irregular, irregular right. rhythm yeah. where it's like every third or every fourth like hegemony or something is kind of yeah. off, and that's fine. Yeah, we, we we really don't have something in place to keep. Although I, I think the latest data is that people who have those quite often those irregular beats like that actually are at higher risk for having problems. Right, they can degrade but, again. But, but there's nothing we do at that point that, right. that makes a difference. So Watch it. Even though that it does kind of say, yeah, something bad could be coming, more likely for you than Joe X or Y. It, sorry that we don't have a, a preventive thing right then to do. Yeah. Except tell you to go buy an Apple Watch. <laughs> so you can catch these <laughs> or, things. Or whatever the brand yeah. is that's going to have it right. with the next version. You know, they'll catch up. So let, let's just stop right there. So I have recommended stop. to my patients to buy an Apple Watch to check their heart because it's cheaper than and, getting a Holter monitor. Uh, yeah, and yet we haven't been sponsored still, yet. <laughs> come on, Apple. <laughs> I don't think At least really send me it. an Apple Watch. Yeah. Because yeah. I've yeah. recommended them. Where's yeah. my Apple Watch? Come on, Apple. Everybody. We're, we're giving you love here. Yep. and Write your Apple people. So, Tell them that we need a sponsor. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. We should be up front with any... Uh, any... Um, What's the word? Divulgences? Uh, yeah. What's the um, uh, I know what anyway, you're talking about. Anyway, we're Anyways. supposed to tell you if we're getting money from anyway. We're not getting any money, no. but we did get this, uh, as you can see, the Echo Duo, it says demo. <laughs> so, so they sent it. Yes, yes we, we did get something for talking about their product, which is, I like it. It's kind of a neat product. And I hold no stock in I, either I think of there, those companies. I don't either. I think there are some competitors to it, but it's still so new that... Um, I, I haven't seen the competitors even know who they yeah. are. Financial disclosures? So, is that what we're talking about? Yeah. Disclosures. Disclosure, there, there that's the word. And, and we <laughs> do disclosures. Yeah, if somebody gives us money to talk about whatever or, or gives us a product, we'll come right out and tell you. So Which, you know you know not to trust us when we talk about <laughs> the product that was given to us. Right. Hopefully, hopefully we'll be objective. I, I, I think we're pretty good, but yeah. that's... I know so, no anyways, going. back to yeah. You're talking about a, uh, aortic arrhythmia, or not aortic? I'm sorry, atrial, atrial arrhythmia. Another one would be uh, where it's just simply a fast beat coming from that part of the heart, and it's still regular, like yeah. PSVT or paroxysmal, paroxysmal supraventricular. Supra that means it comes and goes. Yeah. So um, I, I know some people in my family who have this, yeah. and um, it just comes on randomly. Uh, they start to feel a little dizzy. Uh, sometimes flush, have, they almost feel like the feeling to cough because cough is a reflex to try to reset the heart. And we'll talk about that. It's just funny um, how that happens. And you get a little short of breath. Fix it. Yeah, yeah. That we so so essentially, it's just a heart rate that goes really fast. We're we're talking high one hundred, sometimes two hundred, yeah. um, coming from the top of the heart or close. from from somewhere in the atrium. So sometimes it is that sinoatrial node sending out that beat really fast. Sometimes it's from another part in the atrium. But what we do is we try to slow it down. Um, and the way we do that is with what's called Valsalva maneuvers. So we can definitely do it with medications in the ER if it gets really severe. Um, that is a medication called adenosine, which you don't want to do because it makes you feel like you're dying. Well, it, <laughs> let's just describe what the... <laughs> What the rhythm strip looks like, what the monitor looks like when somebody is given <laughs> to to the point adenosine. where everybody holds their breath. So, so yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, you've been there. So, yeah, so, yeah. Uh, we used to do it in the emergency department. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cardio I, I know, yeah. That's and where so I, you have these complexes of the heart really fast, rhythm, and you give the adenosine and you push it in with with the saline like, you know, right you, after you, it, like like we saw on there, all these little beeps, and, and then the, then the adenosine comes and they slow ooh, down and stop, <laughs> literally. Flatline, no in heartbeat the, in the ER, and you're just sitting there waiting for it for, for oh, I don't know, five seconds. You're just yeah, sitting there hoping right. it comes back, <laughs> and it does. And then it does. Yeah, yeah, it is scary. Those five yeah. seconds are the longest five seconds yeah. in in. We the used to sedate program. patients for it. Yeah, because because like sometimes you don't have time for that, and and yeah. I've I've talked to patients, and and they just say, I felt like I was dying, like they yeah. because because essentially that's what we're doing to them. Yeah, or, if it doesn't come back, that is death. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you may ask why we do that. Why would you uh, do it's, that? It's because it does work. It, yeah. it, it, um, it takes it, you from a bad rhythm back to normal. But anyways, like, yeah, good. essentially just resetting that, that sinoatrial. Yeah. So they don't have to go but home with their heart. we want to try to avoid that 
because it's uncomfortable for everyone involved. And there are ways you can, uh, if you start to get that SVT, things you can do at home. Now, obviously, if you're symptomatic and feeling horrible, call 911, go to your ER, get checked out. Yes. But um, if you're just feeling that rapid beat and you're are like, you sure we want to tell people to do this? <laughs> well, you can try these things. And if it's not working, call your doctor, you know, quickly. 911. Um, yeah, yeah. Or make sure um, someone else is there. But, to do it but it's the Valsalva maneuvers. Uh, yeah, yeah. Because well, if your heart maneuver is a vagal maneuver. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, same thing. Um, but like bearing down, like you're having a bowel movement. Um, they say like blowing into a really tight balloon. Balloon. Now I, I've heard like get like a um, condom. Nope. <laughs> but you had to go there. <laughs> um, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, ooh, hey, hey, what? sweet. Super chat. We don't even Super have the chat. light set up. How many? Uh, Lindsay Antoine, thank you. So we'll, we'll, we'll take a break right there. You're, we'll get back to that. You're already a channel. Because I was talking about a, um, a syringe and blowing in the tip of a switch syringe to try to push out the plunger. But anyways. I'm sorry. I'm thinking of something else. <laughs> anyways. So how would this be diagnosed if a patient only experiences symptoms on occasion? Great question. If they don't have symptoms during an exam. Okay. This is Apple where, Watch. Yes, this is where <laughs> if you've been wanting one, you go to your doctor and you say, please write a prescription for an Apple Watch. Now, nobody's going to pay for it for it. Yeah. But uh, unless you have uh, an HSA. Oh, you could probably use your funds towards that. It is yeah. totally legitimate in my mind as a physician writing prescriptions for an Apple Watch to be covered under a health savings account expense to use that credit card to buy sure. it. Sure. Because we're talking about something that will give you reliably a, an actual one lead EKG rhythm strip that you can share with your doctor if you're having weird things going on with your heart. In fact, the patient I told, I set it up. She's an older lady. She had the new version of the Apple Watch. I don't, is it four or five? No idea. Anyway, the latest Sorry. one. And uh, yeah, we set up the app on it, set up the app on her phone, told her this is how you do it, walk through all the steps. And the next, uh, after the weekend, the Monday morning, I came in and there was an email with a beautiful rhythm strip that I could print out and put in her chart of atrial fibrillation. There you go. So, so yeah, um, without that, the way to do it is to see a cardiologist and get what's called a Holter monitor or an event monitor. And it's essentially the same thing. We put a monitor on you for 24 hours straight, or uh, we put an event monitor, which is this little thing you also put over your heart, and then you click a little button or push something, or you, they have a little device sometimes that you click when you're having symptoms. Um, and it records it while you're having those symptoms. Um, and and sometimes that can be worn long-term, 30 days. Uh, yeah, there's the 24-hour, and then there's the week-long event monitor, and then there's newer things coming out now. Yeah, uh, really long. Cardio has, uh, a th I don't know if it's approved in the U.S. yet, but have you ever seen the... I haven't. It comes around this side and goes down. It, it's like an S-curve kind of. No. Oh, goes oh, around that. one half the chest, the other half the chest. And, and there's a band that holds it on. And you, your cardio app picks up the data from it. Oh, nice. But There you go. Hopefully we'll get one when it gets uh, approved yep. by the FDA. But yeah. I think they use it in Europe. Excellent. So there are some Great things question, you can do. Lindsay, Lindsay if you question. do one of those, let us know about it. That would be interesting. Very yeah. interesting. Maybe send in like a video we could edit into one of our shows and we could show how Lindsay used <laughs> something to find out what her rhythm is. Yeah. And if you do, actually, I should take a, a little moment here. I'm sorry to interrupt. Arrhythmias, yeah, which are usually an interruption in the normal rhythm anyway. There you go. So buffering, <laughs> your heart is buffering. <laughs> if you do have something medical going on, go ahead and send in a little video of it and give us permission to put it on the show, and we'll talk about your health thing that you made a little video about. So with your doctor or your yeah. rhythm strip or whatever. So somebody asked about cardioversion, uh, which may lead us into the ventricular arrhythmias. Yes. Yeah. Talk okay. about those. Well, we actually did talk about cardioversion with adenosine. We did. That is a chemical cardioversion. Yeah. Um, the other type of cardioversion is electrical. So I'm sure you've seen the paddles. So if a patient is not already unconscious, you definitely want to sedate them before electrical oh, man. cardioversion. Think about getting struck by lightning. External yeah. Electrical cardioversion with um, paddles. Yeah, because that is, it'll literally an electrical shock. And if you've ever even been shocked by a light electrical <laughs> stimulus, you know that's not pleasant. Um, yeah. yeah. So that typically is only reserved for ventricular fibrillation or when your heart stops altogether asystole. Um, so well, you, you also have pacing too. 
External pacing, yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you, you do have that. But ventricular fibrillation is where your heart starts to go into that weird quivering um, so rhythm the, where it's not, not organized and you're not getting those beats that you so need that to move So that bag of worms thing we were talking about before, except the heart kind, but not the atria, the ventricles, which is bad because the ventricles are the part of the heart that really does all the work of pumping right. the blood to the body, both to the lungs and to the rest of the body, the two ventricles. Mm -hmm. And if they're not beaten in a coordinated way, we're not getting a pulse. Right. That, that's important. Blood is not flowing, essentially. So that's why we go ahead and use electricity to reset, reset yeah. the, the heartbeat from the pacemaker of the heart with the, the um, synchronized right. shocking yeah. at the certain point in the electrical pattern. The, the, the computer and the machine picks out Sensitive. when to do yeah. it. You don't do it just any time. Right. And actually, um, if, if you ever trained in CPR, uh, one of the parts of CPR is putting on those um, stickers. Pads for the pads automated external for, defibrillator. Yeah, for a defibrillation or cardioversion. And, and it will kind of run that rhythm strip on its own and sense that and see if it is a shockable rhythm, as we call it, yeah. um, which often it and is. And it'll defibrillate the yep. fibrillation. Yeah. Yep. That's, yeah. that's heart rhythmias. Do we hit it all? Oh, we didn't talk about medications, but if you are on atrial fib or sorry, if you have atrial fibrillation, there are medicines, um, ventricular uh, tachycardia, some things like that. There yeah. are, are some medications that can slow down the heart. We do have fairly predictable um, medications that can slow down. The, sorry, medications that can slow down the heart predictably. Um, and we won't go into those in detail. No, not but, today. Um, yeah, because there's so many of them. Right, there are a lot, but but the, just suffice it to say that. A lot of these, unfortunately, you need to be on some medications, so the fast rhythms on medications yeah. to keep it slower. That was so, good. That was good. So like, that kind of got me excited. I enjoyed talking yeah. about that. And Lindsay, thank you. We get excited when we get appreciate the appreciate that. Yeah, that was a great yeah. question. We appreciate yeah. all those questions. Let me let me make sure we didn't miss anything here. Lindsay um, and our other channel members have been on the chat. I've seen that. Yeah. Uh, if you also want to be a channel member, you just join on the webpage that has yep. Auburn Medical Group channel on YouTube and you also can get things like a little badge by your name and yeah. special recognition like like Loris Burgs, Lindsay Antwine, um who else? Uh and Teresa Roth. Yeah. Um all of you. Yeah, and somebody said uh sometimes when they wake up their heart rates around 45 to 50 and it scares them. Hmm. That may be normal for you. I know somebody got um, scared by finding out their heart rate was that slow. Last me too. Week. Yeah. <laughs> um, but but you're if, good you, if you're worried about it, you can go get your heart checked out. Um, ask your doctor about it. See if that is yeah. a normal heart rate for you. And what they'll um, look at is when they're looking at your EKG and seeing, yes, it's slow, they'll also be looking to see if there's some spacing within right. the individual Those beats complexes, to indicate yeah. that you're at risk for some kind of a heart block. And if there isn't, you may just be a really healthy person with, you know, like runners oftentimes will have heart rates that slow. Yeah. And some people just have slow heart rates. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> and somebody was saying it looks like a three lead. I think she was talking about the uh, um, when I was trying to get lead two. Yeah, yeah, it's actually lead two, which is, but it could be close to three because one, two, three is kind of right there. Um, yeah. Anyways, that's its own. Or if I was holding at the wrong angle. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. So somebody knows their EKGs. Very good. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. Okay. So thank you for watching. I, I do um, want you to check out the Dr. Green Knight uh, blog. Check There's it out. Link in the description already. Link below. Check it out. Uh, we go into I go into a little more detail with some of these things. Um, leave a comment, ask any questions. I'm happy to answer those. But I do want to um, call out and thank all of the patrons. That is Boo Boo Kitty and Teresa Watt. Thank you for what you do. You guys make this happen. And also to Lindsay Antoine, who also hey, and she was here today. Yeah, our, so was Teresa. So our special for, guest. Thanks for showing well, up, super guys. Chat. We appreciate it. Yeah, super chats get special recognition, so we'll keep that up. Yeah. So, all right, are we all set? Till next time. Yeah, Dr. Green Vaughn, Dr. Mark Vaughn, telling you to stay in good health. See ya. <laughs>